Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I'm Eddie, your host of The Dean Show. That's right, you're watching The Dean Show every week, same time, same channel. And in the studio, we're going to be talking to American, former Christian, Christian scholar, Dr. Gerald Dirks, and we're going to be talking about the Muslim identity when we come back here on The Dean Show. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is the Dean This is the Dean Show 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 Hey, what's up? How you doing? Good peace, to be here always. Peace be upon peace you. Peace be with you. <laughs> I just wanted to start you for a second. I was like, hey, how you doing? But how we do it is with the peace. We give yes. the peace. Yes. Because we want peace. Absolutely we want Definitely. peace. Definitely. And peace not just between you and me, but peace between and among all people. Absolutely. You know, Islam teaches that, that we are all brothers in humanity. Definitely. All brothers and sisters. Yes. And we share because we care. Absolutely. And that's why we're doing the Dean Show, to enlighten the minds and the hearts of the people. And today we're going to be talking about the identity. You are an American, yes. and you're Muslim. Yes. Does this conflict at all? No, not at all. But unfortunately, a lot of people think it does conflict. And real unfortunately, even a lot of Muslims think that it needs to conflict. Uh, and this brings up an issue that I think is vitally important to Muslims here in America. And that is the issue of the second and third generation of Muslims in America and issues surrounding their development of a sense of identity. Mm -hmm. I was born here, raised in America, and I personally have some experiences when I started to you know, come to this way, the way of the Creator, mm -hmm. Islam, submitting to the one God. People would ask because, you know, my name's Eddie. Sure. So people would say, like, well, when are you going to get a Muslim name? Why, why? <laughs> you know, and so you would, you know, you want to do God's thing. But sometimes, you know, the culture will creep in and you feel like, am I doing God's thing or I'm doing back home culture? Exactly, exactly. You know, you, you said, when are you going to get a Muslim name? I've, I've had the same question asking me. But in reality, there's no such thing as a Muslim name. There's Arab names. Uh -huh. You know, there are names associated with, with Prophet Muhammad and his companions, etc. But telemathies to being Muslim names is, is rather ridiculous. And, and there's no reason that any person should feel constrained to change his name unless his name has some clearly anti-Islamic meaning. Like if it's named after a pagan god or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now also the dress. Some people feel like, mm -hmm. okay, now, you know, I'm used to maybe going to work in a, in a three-piece suit or, you know, modest clothing. Sure. But now, ho hold on, you, you, you got to throw this throw on before you go to work. Now you're a Muslim. What do you, did you have to do that? No, absolutely not. Yeah. No, the, 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 absolutely not. Islam prescribes a modest dress for both males and females. Yeah. You know, within Western clothing, one can usually find modest dress. One doesn't need to wear a thobe or... Uh, a kufi on top of the head, etc. Yeah. Uh, but one does need to dress modestly. Yeah. One does not need to eat uh, kafta kebabs or biryani, uh, uh -huh. but uh, one does have to follow, you know, Islamic dietary rules, which is basically no pork, um, no alcohol, uh, and, and there are a few other meats that are uh, we were prohibited from eating. Give us some more examples of some of the dilemmas, the, the challenges that you feel, some of the new converts, and also just you know Muslims who come from overseas and they raise their kids here, and now they're having mm -hmm. a conflict here with culture and Muslim, and they end up abandoning everything. Well, for new converts, one of the big issues is, do I have to give up my American identity? And the yeah. answer is absolutely not. Unfortunately, some new converts think they have to end up becoming more Arab than an Arab, or more Pakistani than a Pakistani, etc. Uh, and end up really uh, alienating themselves from their environment. Uh, and for many of these people, uh, eventually they end up dropping out of Islam. 
simply because of this overreaction in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, that they were actually jumping into a culture and not to the actual religion of Islam. In terms of the second and third generation of Muslims in America, this is vitally important because we have uh, many wonderful uh, immigrant brothers and sisters who come to this country. They have their children here. They raise their children here. But unfortunately, many of them I think they're raising Jordanian children or Syrian children or Pakistani children or Bangladeshi children or Indonesian children, and they are not. And this is what is so vitally important that they need to understand. If their children are being raised here in America, they're raising American children. And this is going to be the national cultural identity of the vast majority of second and third generation Muslims here in America. Their national cultural identity is being American. Now, really unfortunately, what sometimes happens is that these Muslim parents who, through the best of intentions, unfortunately throw up their hands in alarm and say, oh my goodness, you know, my son or my daughter is turning into an American instead of a Jordanian or a Syrian or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to stop this. I have to correct this. And one of the ways they try to do this sometimes is by so intricately linking Islam with this foreign culture from back home that when the kids end up rejecting the foreign culture in favor of having an American secular, uh, an American national cultural identity, they also end up rejecting Islam as part of their religious identity. And this is a real danger that the Muslim parents who are immigrants need to be aware of. Your children are going to be Americans. Don't fight it. They can be perfectly good Americans and perfectly good Muslims at the same time. So should the parents be more in tune with adamantly teaching their children Islam from the authentic sources, the Quran and the Sunnah, mm -hmm. rather than many of the back home cultures? Absolutely, and, and, but, but again, this is one of the problems, is that for many of, of our immigrant brothers and sisters, their culture is so intertwined in their understanding of Islam that they may have difficulty doing that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that needs to be done, that they need to do and that we need to be doing in our mosques and in our private Islamic schools is we need to make this process of separating culture from Islam. That's very important, you know. Absolutely. We need to be teaching the pure Islam. We don't need to be teaching culture. Definitely, and with that said, we'll be right back with more Dr. Joe Dirks here on The Dean Show. And if we're gonna worship something, I figured I might as well worship the creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your creator. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Gerald Dirks. Moving along now, Dr. Gerald, please. Do you see now, because of this pushing the culture on the children and mixing it so much with Islam and its confusion, that this creates more confusion? And one of the ramifications is because now, because of this, the kids will start to develop a dual personality? Well, I, I wouldn't say a dual personality because that has definite psychological implications yeah. in terms of a, a diagnosis. But what we do see happening, uh -huh. and... and Brother Yahya Emmerich has written beautifully about this in an article that every Muslim parent should read called Just What Are Our Youth Thinking Anyway? Okay. Which has appeared a couple of times in the Message International. 
And Brother Yahya points out, and I have seen this same thing from teaching in private Islamic schools, the kids act one way at home. Yeah. You know, where they pretend to be Jordanian, Indian, whatever. But as soon as they're removed from the home, from their parents' supervision, for the first time they feel like they can really be themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that they're, they're putting on an act at home. Uh, they feel they can't be honest and open with their parents because of all this cultural pressure that's coming down on them from their parents. And that the only time they feel they're, they're truly free and truly free to be who they are is uh, when they're away from their parents, away from other adult members of, of the Muslim community. And this is very troublesome. Yeah. Very troublesome. Um, you know, just speaking from experience, uh, last private Islamic school at which I taught, I taught English language and social studies. Yes. I did not teach Islamic studies. Yes. Did not teach Quran. But the kids, the middle school kids, whenever they would have a question about Islam, they would come to me. Yes. They would not go to their Islamic studies teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't begin to go to their Islamic studies teacher to ask the question. They would come to me. Why? I was the American. I was not the person who was going to stuff down some cultural uh, trappings on them. Yeah. So let's separate Islam. Let's get to the pure Islam. Pure Islam. Yeah. As taught by the last and final messenger yes. sent to mankind of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Absolutely. And obviously it was taught by all the messengers, but we have it now in its completion with the last and final messenger. Yeah, and, and we have to strip it from, from these... Uh, cultural accretions that have occurred uh, across many different cultures. Uh, we have to strip it of, of uh, to be blunt, some of the fairy tales yes. that get tacked on to Islam by otherwise well-meaning Muslims. Yeah. I can think of one example where uh, in, in when I was teaching at the last Islamic school I was teaching at, where the students came in, middle school students came in, and uh, said, you know, we just learned in Islamic studies class that if you draw a five-pointed star on the floor in a circle around it, which of course is the pentagram, yeah. and you stand in the middle of it, if you try to come out, a jinn will come and immediately kill you, just like that. So this is obviously... This was being taught in Islamic yeah. studies class. And I said, no, <laughs> no way. Yeah. Oh yes, you know, our Islamic studies teachers taught us. So I went up to the blackboard, I took a piece of chalk, I went to the back of the room, I drew a five-pointed star on the floor, big circle around it, and I stepped into the middle of it. And the kids were, oh my goodness. But they're already programmed now. You oh, see yeah. them clinching the chairs. Oh, yeah. And then I stepped out. Of course, I'm a bit of a, a ham at times. Yeah. And so when I stepped out, I clutched my chest and stumbled. Two kids screamed. Yeah. They, they thought I'd just been killed. Yeah. Now, here's the point. This myth, this fairy tale, was dismantled by a Muslim in an Islamic setting. Wow. Okay, which is good. But what happens if that had never happened? And six years down the road, they're telling their non-Muslim friend about this. And the non-Muslim friend does what I did. They've just disproven Islam. Yes. This is the tremendous danger that exists with, with adding stuff, fairy tales, cultural stories, etc., to the pure message of Islam. Get that out. We, Get it out. We don't need it. We don't need it. And, and trying to tack it on is going to lead the next generation to reject those sorts of things. And if it's tied too tightly to Islam, to reject Islam as well. And that's the big, big danger. Do you think this also leaves a bad taste in people's mouths? Some of the non-Muslims, when they see some of these things, this kind of draws them back, sets them back? Well, of course it does. Of Media gets it... a hold of some of these well, things that sure, people do? Sure, because, because I mean, what, what you're doing is you're creating differences. Differences that don't need to be there. Yeah. So if, if it's so deeply embedded, how does someone, where do they begin? To fix this, how? Well, alhamdulillah, I, uh, praise God, I, I think we have to be aware of the fact that this exists. And, and I think each and every immigrant Muslim parent in this country needs to sit down and discuss this with each other 
They need to acknowledge the fact that their kids, if their kids are going to be raised here, are going to be Americans. Mm -hmm. And the more the parents try to fight this process, the more likely it is they're going to force their kids away from the slum. Mm -hmm. You know, so fine. Let your kids develop an American national cultural identity. They're going to do it anyway. Just work on making sure they keep the Islamic religious identity. But it's the religious identity. It's not the cultural stuff that uh, has been attached to it. So the parents are going to need to try and separate out what's religion and what's culture. Mm -hmm. Certainly this is something that we need to be doing in our mosques. Definitely something we need to be doing in our private Islamic schools. We need to be separating the religion of Islam from whatever culture we happen to come from. Now that doesn't mean that you're an American now that you, as a Muslim now, we're talking about, hey, you know, I can go and have a six pack of beer or I'm going to the nightclubs, no, 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 no. I'm living a freestyle lifestyle <laughs> as they call it. No, no, no. We, no, no. We take the good from the culture, but we hold our identity as ones who have submitted the God and we do all the good wholesome things and we stay away from the, all the evil elements. Look, look uh, you know, going out and getting drunk or using drugs is not part of the American identity. Yeah. Um, it's a part of the identity of a subgroup of, of people, but it's certainly not just people in America. Because some people will say, oh, American, oh, you're American now, so you can just let loose. No. No, that's not uh, what we're talking Obviously not. In fact, if, if we look, certainly there are a lot of Christian groups that share the same social values that we share. Yeah. Uh, you know, where they're against drinking, they're against drugs, they're against premarital sex, etc. Yeah. You know, so, hey, if they can be Americans and maintain their religious values, we can be Americans and maintain our Islamic values, but we need to make sure that what we're talking about is what the religion actually says, what the Quran and the Sunnah actually tell us to do. Absolutely, and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Okay, you've got your dream home, and you've got your dream car, but you're going to get old, and things are going to happen to you in your life, and then what have you got? At the end of the day, it's an empty dream that has no real foundation. We are going to die, and we're going to meet our Lord, and He is going to judge us. It becomes an obligation for each single human being to find out what the Quran is. Islam is telling us to stay away from things which are bad for your person and bad for the society. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Gerald Dirks. We're talking about the Muslim identity, identity, and a Muslim is one who is consciously chosen to submit to the one God, doing God's will, not our desires. And we're talking about leaving off some of the back home cultures, which you'll actually see a lot of times. God Almighty says to be united, not divided. Yeah. And do you see a lot of times this divides the community? Oh, of course it divides the community because America, we're, we're looking at a melting pot. We're looking at Muslims who have come from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from India, Bangladesh, from uh, Pakistan, from each of the Arab countries, from many of the African countries. We're looking at African Americans who have reached back to their ancestral past to claim Islam as their religion. So, so we have all these different cultures here. Um, but the next generation, that second generation, you know, they're the ones being raised in this culture. They're going to be Americans, etc. One of the, the real challenges that the Muslim community has in America is this whole issue of tribalism or nationalism or, yeah. or ethnocentrism, however you want to call it. Nationalism, just holding on to just, you know, yeah. the flag and... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because a flag they're holding on to is not the American flag. Yeah. Um, you know, a survey was done by, sponsored by CARE, yeah. uh, a number of years ago called uh, a Portrait of a Mosque in America, I think was the name of the big survey. Yeah. And one of the things they discovered in their national survey of mosques around the country is that 27% 27% of the mosques in this country reported that they were one of their key goals was to preserve a certain ethnic or national heritage. Now, I'm sorry, brother. I don't think there's any way that that's a proper goal of a mosque. Mm -hmm. 
What that's saying is that 27% of the mosques in America are systematically excluding every Muslim who does not happen to belong to that particular ethnic or national grouping. Mm -hmm. Mosques should be open to every Muslim. Everybody. Everybody. We're all brothers. We are all brothers and sisters. And sisters. And we shouldn't be divided like this. Absolutely we shouldn't be divided. Yeah. And yet we, we see the, the Muslim community being divided so often along tribal lines or ethnic lines, etc. Uh, and it weakens us. It fatally weakens us yeah. as a religious community. If you go to a large American city and you stop a Muslim on the street and you say, where's the mosque? You're likely to get an answer that goes something like this. Well, you know, the Arab mosque is over here. The indo pak mosque is over here, and over here there's an African-American mosque. Drop all that. Yeah, we have to drop all that. Yeah, we have to become one Muslim family. Hold on to the rope of God. Hold on to the absolutely. rope of Allah. This is what the Creator is telling us, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So now we're almost out of time. Continue to give us some advice, because this is a very, 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 very important topic. And we want to be united. We don't want to be divided because the key divider is the shaitan, those satanic yeah. forces. Allah wants us to be together, functioning as one unit, worshiping one God. Absolutely. So give us uh, a few uh, closing comments and suggestions for the community at large. Well, uh, let me speak directly to, to the immigrant Muslims who are parents here in this country. You know, it's inevitable. Your, your children, especially your grandchildren, they're going to start losing your native language. They're going to start losing some of your native uh, recipes as far as cooking and uh, etc. This is to be expected. The more you fight it, the more conflict you're likely to have with your children. And I say this wearing my hat as a child clinical psychologist. Accept the fact that your children are going to be Americans, that your grandchildren are going to become Americans. Don't get distracted by whether they're wearing a sarong or a sari uh, or whether they're wearing modest Western clothes. Focus on the pure teachings of Islam. Make sure that's in place. Don't waste your time and your energy and your influence trying to build in cultural issues into your children. Mm -hmm. Now the good things from culture, let's say you mentioned biryani, mm -hmm. if they want to still eat biryani, some of the good well, things, they, want to they, do don't it, have that's to, fine. they don't have to give up all that, right? No, no, they don't have to give it up. Yeah. That's fine if they want to do it. Yeah. You know, I'm a German-American background. Yeah. You know, I still enjoy eating sauerbraten. Yeah. So <laughs> Svibach. Uh, yeah. You know, ich kann noch etwas Deutsch sprechen. But don't make that part uh, of the, but, don't make that the religion. No, don't okay. make that the religion. And don't force it on your children or your okay. grandchildren. Gotcha. You know, if they want to grab it, they'll grab it. Don't yeah. force it on them. Gotcha. Okay, and people can get a hold of you if they want to invite you to come visit. Where? At, uh, they can reach me at my website. Thank you very much. May God Almighty Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, reward you once again. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. And you got to hear some great advice from Dr. Gerald Dirks, born, bred, and raised American. He's telling us, as Allah is telling you, to hold on to the rope of God, of the Creator, Allah, and be not divided amongst yourselves. We need to be one ummah, one humanity, worshiping the one God. And if you got some back home culture, you like that food, the biryani, go ahead and eat that. Some people can't. It's too hot and too spicy, but that's nothing wrong with it. What we're saying is don't mix your back home cultures with Islam. Don't mix it. Islam is pure. It's from the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we have the verbatim word of God, the Quran. And we have the sunnah, the authentic teachings from the last and final messenger sent to mankind. No more messengers to come. Get to know this and teach this and live this. And that is how we can attain peace. And that's how we can stay united. And we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you.